Sorry I'm late. <laughs> uh, it's been a busy morning. How are we? Hello! Hi friends. How are we doing? It's, it's okay, thank you. Hello, hello. Oh, there goes Bones. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Miku is cute. Here's Miku. Miku Miku. My baby. Tell her tell him about how she steals food. Oh, so Miku, our our wonderful girl here. She is on a diet because she eats a lot of food. And she's a little cat. And she's not happy about it. Which I understand. But we discovered she was, um, so the new kitten, he has like, uh, like a large cage that he's in as like his little home base enclosure for now, before he's old enough to be out on his own, unsupervised. And he has a little bowl of food in there because kittens need to eat a lot. And, um, it keeps, so he can have like a full dish. And the other cats cannot take his food. But Miku was sticking her little paws in through the bars and stealing the kitten food, <laughs> which we discovered. And apparently she's been doing this for weeks and we didn't know. So she's been eating more than she should and stealing from the kitten. And he needs to grow big. <laughs> I know. Bad Miku. Exactly. This music does slap. Patricia Taxon makes wonderful music. Alright, off you go, miss. Alright, let's get started. Um, who would like to go first? I see uh Lesbine is in the chat. Um Ink is here. I think that's you, Ink Luminary. Hello. So who would like to go first? What? <laughs> we so this is our critique stream for the month. Um oh hey Battlebox. And we have our lovely Patreon supporters who have um given uh their submissions. So we're gonna go over those. 
Mailbox, you want to go? Okay, awesome. This is the same person? Okay, I thought so. Because I know you, you changed your name on the Discord too. So it's like, is that my friend? Do I know this person? Okay. So... Battle box. Oh, shoot. I should get this open, shouldn't I? Uh, all right. So, my friend. I only had two chapters prepared. All good. That's all good. Um, yeah, okay, so. Right, so the first two chapters of a new story. A little, little romance comic, love it. Um, okay, so you're looking for a focus on the pacing and the layout and first take on this story and anything else. Um, okay, so. Yeah, so it's got a bit of a, a quiet start, you were saying, which I think is totally fine. Um, uh, so, the, okay, so pacing-wise, um, I think it works. I like that you're taking a bit of, like, a slow approach to introduce your characters. Um, I find that you've set, like, a really nice tone where, like, it's got very cozy vibes, especially the first chapter where like they they they're celebrating and they go out drinking with all their coworkers, um, and it just has this nice little little vibe where there's some like found family kind of vibes going on between Eve and his coworkers. Um, uh, I like in the second chapter where you're kind of setting up, like, his relationship with this other guy that he's friends with. Um, you're slowly introducing, like, the love interest through, like, that little TV clip. Um, and I like how you kind of set up what is happening instead of, say, like, because the... The inciting incident between the characters, I'm assuming, is this interview that Eve is going to do. So I like how you're kind of setting up the stakes at the beginning, saying, like, um, this could get Eve a raise. Um, and how, uh, just like, you know, kind of how this paper works and how, like, why it's important that Eve goes to this interview. Um, so I like how you've set that up and you're setting up who all the characters are and... Yeah, I think the pacing is working really well. It's, um, I think in some of your notes you said like, oh, it's too slow, but I don't think so. I think you're doing a good job with like, here's my main character, here's what's at stake, here's what he wants, and slowly bring in the, the love interest and then build it from there. So I think you're doing a good job with that. Um, so then from the panel to panel pacing, um... Yeah, I didn't find any issues. I liked, um, I noticed in the second chapter particularly, kind of when um, Eve is like, I can't remember, is it getting up in the morning? Something like that. Also, I appreciated the censoring for the stream. That was lovely. But yeah, kind of waking up and like getting ready. Um, I liked the quick little panels here to kind of jump through these like tiny little moments and I like how we get like a focus on what his apartment looks like and again it just adds to that really cozy feeling that this comic has. Um, so that was a standout that I really enjoyed. I like that you use these larger panels um, to kind of show off kind of larger slower moments like when he's having this conversation with his boss. And it gets kind of sentimental, and then we're introduced to the friend. Um, and I noticed you're using these kind of large panels as um, kind of like scene transitions, which is interesting. Like, I know you have like literally some like transition panels to show like a big scene change, but um, 
yeah, it's interesting. Like when you have you show Eve getting ready, we have like the the pulled out view of the other editor. Um, yeah, it's an interesting idea, and I think it helps pacing wise to kind of like uh, slow things down a little bit because when you're using lots of small panels, uh, people will read it quickly. So having these nice like long panels kind of gives the reader a moment to like sit and think. So I I would keep that up with like establishing shots. Um, like when Eve is getting ready, um, I think, yeah, I'd even, for something like this panel where they're all at the bar, um, drinking, um, I like the introduction where you have the restaurant and then I like the little call out with the cheers, but I think, I think you could keep this restaurant panel small because it's not, it's not like super important to show where they are. The inside of the room is more important to this like section of the story. So I'd recommend like keep this like establishing shot small, but it's important to show like where they are. And I'd honestly make this panel where they're all, all the coworkers are sitting around the table, like make it a bit taller, make it a bit larger so that like you kind of ease into the scene. Um, I think the cheers introduction is great because it sets the tone. Um, but yeah, but take more time to like establish the scene. So here's like a, an example where I think you could extend that panel. Um, uh, yeah, because I think where places where you've done it well, like I really like um, Eve looking at his phone and then the establishing shot of the movie theater. Um, yeah, so take take more opportunities like that. I think that's a really great thing you could expand on. I tried to keep it two to three panels. Uh, the pink box is representing a phone screen. Yeah, yeah, I liked that. I thought that was neat, kind of playing around with the, the format and stuff. Um... Yeah, honestly, I thought that was also a really cute way to, like, open your chapters with, like, having photos <laughs> kind of overlaid with, like, speech bubbles and uh, um, captions and stuff. I think that is a cute way to start your chapter. Are you going to do anything like a, like a phone screen kind of frame? Because that could be cute. Um, I also love Sabrina. Sabrina is my queen. She's baby. And I will protect her with my life. Just used it for pacing. I like it. <laughs> Sabrina is the best. Um... Hmm. Happy with how it's turning out so far? That's awesome. I agree. I think this is a very good start to your comic. And I'd be excited to see the characters meeting because I love a meet cute, you know? <laughs> Uh, did you have any other specific questions about this? Was there anything I didn't cover? Because, yeah, layout and pacing, I think, overall, you've done a really good job. Nope, you're happy? Awesome. Well, thank you for submitting. And thanks for waiting till today. Um, I figured we'd have, like, a few less uh, submissions because we did the one for December, like, at the beginning of the month, and January is busy for people. So, yeah, because everyone's getting back to school and work and all that fun stuff. So, awesome. Who would like to go next? Because I know we have Ink here. 
Um, we have Lesbine, I believe. Do we have Pigment or Mouse or Kuro or Fitz here as well? Ink, you want to go? Okay, awesome. All right. Let me see. What did you write, my friend? Right, so you're practicing the perspective from below, which I think is awesome. Um, okay, so you're looking for general stuff, like anatomy, composition, colors, uh, and the focus being on the perspective. Um, right, so the Elden Ring one is from slightly below, and then the mermaid one is to be a more dramatic angle. Okay. Um, okay, and then you have another one kind of showing, practicing heads from below. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so... I'm just waiting to go to break. Okay. Awesome. So yeah, um, Pigment, let me know when you're on break and we can do yours. Um. Okay. Ink, my friend. So I think you've done a really great job with the perspective. I think I'm seeing like some great improvements from the last one that you showed last month or I guess earlier this month. But yeah, it's looking really good and I think your practice is paying off. Um, I also, I really love the colors for this one, um, especially like up in this top half. I really love these kind of like autumnal colors going on with the character. I vaguely know who this character is. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is it the, the Scarlet Rot lady? I think I vaguely know Elden Ring characters. <laughs> um... Um, but anyways, love the color combo where, um, I really like this kind of soft red. Like it's, it's, it's like got a bit of a, a dusty quality to it. Um, I really like how that's been brought in, like through the cape and through, uh, the, the stuff in the background here. Uh, millennia OP boss. Okay. Okay. I thought so. That's right. I'm I'm a gamer. <laughs> um, okay. Anyways, so yeah, I love the kind of quality of the reds here and I like how um it mixes with like the gold and I like how you've got these kind of like desaturated creamy colors in the background for like the it looks like a tree behind her. Um So yeah, that's looking good. Reminds me of apples. Yeah, exactly. It's got a very, like, autumnal feeling to it. Um, um, yeah. So I like how there is a mix of the, like, bringing in the purple and the pink with, like, the butterflies and... Um, with the ground here. I think it needs, like a little bit more um uh like mixing it in somehow if that makes sense like i'm finding like it works above really well where the the little splashes of like other colors like the purples and the pinks like they meld in very well with um like the treatment you've done on the reds here, for example, and this kind of like creamy color background. And I like how it gets more desaturated as you go up. Um, so that like all the saturation focus goes on the character. But I'm finding down at the bottom, it feels very just like cut, like just a slice of like a different color scheme right at the bottom. Um, I'm wondering if it would help to kind of just bring in some more of that red down at the bottom. Whether that's like in through the shadow or um, maybe pulling this purple so it's a bit closer to a red. Um, that could also help. 
Um, and possibly like incorporating the like the water she's standing on. At least I think it's water. Um, and then these kind of like roots and trees behind her, like kind of showing the roots going in to the water, uh, just something like that to really, um, or if it's dirt and sand, like going into that as well. But, you know, just kind of incorporating this because right now it just looks like a horizontal slice and it feels very different compared to like these very like organic shapes behind her. Um... Um, compositionally, I think it's very interesting. I like how um, a lot of the elements really bring the focus up to her face. Because um, I like how this tree behind her has this very, like, subtle kind of, like, triangle leading up towards her. And then we get, she's kind of, like, surrounded by, um, it looks like roots and hair and stuff. Um uh that surrounds her um and then with like the lines on her her outfit and like her her sword is it a sword or a gun maybe both um probably a sword do they have guns in elden ring i don't think so <laughs> um but yeah anyways um but yeah everything kind of leads you up to her face and that's where all the detail is and i think that's great um sword okay i thought so i was like wait a minute this isn't bloodborne <laughs> um Madoka, goopy can you stop being a bad dog <laughs> we put up a new bookshelf and there's like plushes on it and Madoka was like can i take this is this mine <laughs> um okay so right um so compositionally i think everything going on up here is like fantastic it works really well lots of subtle cues leading you up i think again there needs to be just some more kind of detail down at the bottom to like bring you up i think part of it could be like incorporating these roots into the ground um it could be having some more elements maybe like foreground elements or something kind of leading you back up here but there's just so much like detail going on up here and then it's very lacking down here it feels very empty um so i think you just need something to kind of like bring you up it could even be just like atmospheric haze or something <laughs> like smoke or um mist or something like that just to bring it up a little bit oh no i'm sorry kuro don't worry i was also late so you're not alone um okay so yeah so i think it just needs a bit more detail down at the bottom but everything up here is like gorgeous um all right so then the perspective from below so i do like what you've done here where it feels very much like you can tell that it is a very slight kind of upward look at this character like the the camera if there was a camera it would be like down here kind of around her shin knee area um, which is great. And then we get like a very slight kind of like, um, uh, looking at her from above. So you see like a little bit of the bottom of her chin, you know, her shoulders are pulled back, that kind of thing. And I think you've done a very good job with that. Um, pardon me. Where the, so for example, with like her face, um, yeah, I do like how her, you've moved like her features up a little bit more. We're seeing kind of the underside of her nose. Um, and, uh, it's like, it's slight enough that it feels as if we're like looking at her from below, but it, it's, um, like it's, yeah, like you said, it's not as dramatic as your other image you've submitted. Um, so I think that's great. And I think you've done a very good job with, uh the perspective on that um like i said the perspective on the roots and stuff behind her really helps add to the effect um anatomy wise again everything feels very much like in perspective with it like all the different materials on her so for example like looking at her bracer um we're seeing kind of like the bottom of this circle same with like the belts, we're seeing it slightly from the bottom so that helps add to the effect of the perspective. 
Um, so that's awesome. Um... The only thing that feels a little bit off to me is her stance. So she has kind of one leg pulled forward. Um, but I think there's just something about her stance that I feel needs to be like a little bit stronger. Like maybe have, I feel like this front foot is placed a little bit to the right, like just a smidge too much. It needs to be brought to the left. And I think her foot needs to be facing forward. So then it's like, um, it would give the vibe that she's like standing firmly on her back foot and the other one is kind of like raised to the front a little bit if that makes sense and i feel like that would be a more sturdy stance um but otherwise everything looks great like anatomy and perspective wise um i'm able to take break now if i could go next awesome i will i will look at yours next pigment um, Ink, do you have any other questions on this one? Is there anything I didn't cover? Um, that covers it. Awesome. Thank you. So, right. So, for this one, you wanted to do a more extreme uh angle um okay so compositionally this looks awesome i like the uh everything's just really framed well and there's a lot going on in the different kind of like foreground background where like i like how we see the swell of like waves behind her and some of this like magic lightning stuff she's got going on um, we see the ship uh, kind of in the the kind of middle ground foreground part. And then I really like how we see these uh, very crisp waves up front. Um, and I also like how she is like slightly off to the right. So we get her very close to like a focal point. Um, it's not just like straight down the middle. So that's awesome. Um, and then same with the boat. It's on like almost like a diagonal axis. Uh, so it helps kind of create that dynamicness um yeah and there's lots of movement going on like there's these like sways and curls in her hair there's like the jagged waves on the sea there's like lightning and all these like diagonal kind of shapes with the clouds um yeah just lots going on and it's really great to see um I also love the colors I really like how you've gone very dark in the foreground I like how she's shadowed by this like light behind her um, and you have these like very vibrant like teals um, kind of highlighting everything. Um, and then the boat, which is all like gold and red. I like how it really like pops against everything. It's very nice um, color wise and compositionally. I think perspective wise, you've got like the imposingness there and like in the scene she feels in perspective like i know um in a previous one you submitted i was saying like the background and the character feel like at very different angles but this one feels like it feels right it feels like you've got the perspective of the environment down and she fits into it really well um i think there's some things that are a little bit off about her like her body in perspective um Pardon me. So part of it is like her face feels there's something with her face and her neck where it doesn't quite feel it feels like tilted forward a little bit too much. Because our camera we're about at her waist I'd say. Maybe down here. Yeah, I think it it might not be the perspective on the face. It might be the connection between the chin and the neck. Part of it is her neck feels very wide for her shoulders. Um, and her head might be a bit too big on that side as well. Um... 
but it feels very much like her head is kind of stuck on. We're not seeing the kind of like plain transition between the bottom of the chin leading into the neck where I think like even if you just added like a little bit of shadow here to kind of highlight that that would help it is hard to do you'd have to I think you have to lean on shading quite a bit for something like this where you want to kind of keep the structure of the chin, but you also need to show that transition from like the bottom of the neck. I think like it's very much like you need to put shadow kind of right underneath the chin and have a bit more space there. Um, yeah, I think it just, the problem is it feels very flat on her chin and her neck where I think you need to, create more form there the way you have with say like the shading on her hands yeah I think that needs to be brought in some more um and I think um yeah and I think part of the problem too is like I like what you've done with the shoulders they feel like they're in the right perspective but they feel very small so I feel like they need to be like pulled back more um yeah I think part of it is just like her shoulders need a bit more space her her head and neck need a bit more kind of like form to them and uh like size down a little bit but I think that would really help because like Things feel like they're in perspective kind of around her like chest and neck area, but they they feel just like a bit too condensed, if that makes sense. It might be like they're too squished. Like I think the condensedness works because you're seeing that um, kind of skewed from below look where it would look smaller um, if you're from below. But it, it just feels like a bit squished horizontally. So I think it's creating some like weird skew to it. Um... Yeah, and I think for the kind of angle you're going for, I feel like her hairline is, like, too far forward. It would be more back, like, up here. Um, so, like, the gem would be sitting a bit taller on her head, and uh, the crown would probably be, like, a bit more hidden from where it is. Um, we'd probably... It, it would help it with when you move the hairline it would probably help move like the rest of the features on the face like we'd see i like how you have the curve to the eyes where we're seeing them from below a little bit but i think that needs to be like pushed a little bit more the nose you could probably kind of like um show more of the bottom of it maybe part of it would cover part of the eye and then same with the mouth like once you move everything up i think moving the mouth up will really kind of help and then you'd have that space to really like carve out the shape of the the chin and the neck um yeah so hopefully that is helpful um yeah like I said compositionally color wise this looks fantastic I think there's just a couple little tweaks you could make on the perspective do you have any other questions on that one That hits the points. Awesome. So the last one you were practicing more with like different angles. Okay, so first you have like head on and then from below. So yeah, so you've got the right idea where this, um, the line across the eyes becomes more curved upwards, like you're seeing the bottom of a circle. Um, yeah, and the face gets kind of condensed like that. Um, I think... What I'm noticing too, so you have the three quarter angle and then pushed up. Yep, so you're getting the circle right, it's condensing. Um, and then same with below. And then from the very low angle. Okay. So I think you're condensing things correctly and you have the right idea, but I think what's missing is you're, you're losing the shape where the chin 
where the jaw connects with the neck, it feels very flat the way you're drawing it. So like, um, so what you've done here with the face, uh, in the, the head on view works, but there's no shape beneath it. There's no, there's kind of like a diamond shape that goes on underneath the chin where it connects to the neck. Um, again, it depends on the face. Like people have different chins and jaws, obviously. Like someone with a stronger jaw will have more of like a defined thing where like I personally have, I'm very chinless. So <laughs> mine is not very defined, but there's definitely, it helps to think of it as a diamond shape. So you have like, you probably have like a couple inches, an inch or more, depending on the character, like before from the tip of the chin to like where it connects with the neck. And then you have kind of like the bottom half of that diamond where everything is connecting. So yeah, it kind of helps to think of it like that. A classic nerd. Shut up, Bones. You're a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Oop. <laughs> Bones, stop interrupting. Gosh. Uh... Beep. 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 Oh, Beeps wouldn't go back to bed. She's she's got yayas. Um Oh. <laughs> She's silly. Not burn. <laughs> That's okay. Um, okay. Sorry. So was I saying the chin? Yeah. So I think what you're missing. So you have kind of the right idea where you're showing like a little bit of below the chin and then you've got kind of this triangle shape and you're getting it more when you look like really far down, like the really from below look where you're showing that kind of like diamond shape. Um, but yeah, if you look here, like this very far below one you've got down here, like it's, it's, it's missing space for the neck. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, like there's... If I were you, what might really help with figuring this out, so I feel like you're putting in a lot of structure on the face and like the upper part of the head, but I think you really need to like sit down and add structure to like the neck and the shoulders because where the shoulders connect also will really help you figure out kind of the, the neck and head alignment. Um, but another thing to look at is to really look at like musculature and like skeletal structure because that will give you a really good view of how it all connects. Um, and even if your style is like more stylized and simplified, like as you draw and as I draw, having that understanding will really help with like placing everything. Cause it feels very much like your neck is placed like too far forward. Like you don't have space underneath the chin and the jaw. Um, whereas like the neck kind of sits kind of like, And again, it depends on the person. Obviously, everyone has different anatomy, but the general rule of thumb is, like, the neck kind of starts, like, I don't know, probably through the cheeks, I guess? <laughs> and then connects, like, at the back of the head. There's a bit of an indent, like, your skull comes out and then there's a bit of an indent at the back, but, like... Um, I think your your necks are like being placed too far forward and you're kind of missing that space under the jaw. Um, 
I think so. Illustrating Adam's apple, that area. Totally. Like, I think you'll find that, like, when you start studying, you'll go, like, too in-depth and it'll look, like, too detailed for your style. But then, like, you can slowly kind of pull back and get that structure underneath. Yeah, that you, I think you need your face to stick out a bit more and you need to, like, really structure out, like, the jaw and how it connects to the neck and how the neck muscles, like, connect to the shoulders and stuff. Like, um, I think that'll help you out a lot because right now your faces feel very flattened um, and I'd love to see kind of, like, carving out that structure, seeing, like, the jaw attaching and the ears and stuff filling out the skull a bit more, I think that'll really help you with, like, understanding how to look at, like, a character from below and then a character from above. Um, it also really helps, what helped me with this kind of perspective is kind of, like, drawing a face within a cube. I guess it'd be more like a rectangular prism, but, um, because uh, I find the way I picture it and this might not be helpful because everyone pictures things differently, right? But the way I picture it is, like, I imagine I have, like, a block of wood and what I'm doing is, like, carving out the shape underneath. So I might draw, like, um, and I find it helps you kind of, like, turn the image around in your head or, like, on the, on the page as well, where, um, you can really... Uh, you can really kind of see, uh, it helps kind of remove that flatness to like a drawing. So like the head would be a, a rectangle, like a rectangular prism. And then the neck would be like either like a cylinder or like another rectangular prism that you then like carve out. Hopefully that makes sense. And that helps you a little bit. Cause I found when I started thinking of it like that, it was a lot easier to like tilt the head back. Cause that would be like the bottom of the, the block. Um, that you can kind of carve out and like the front face you kind of would um, sand down the edges to get to the cheeks if that makes sense. What is this stream about? We are doing a critique stream for our uh, Patreon supporters. So I give I give tips and feedback to some lovely artists. That makes sense? Okay. Hopefully that's helpful. Um... Yeah, I found, I found thinking everything into, it, I always joke that everything's boxes because that, that really helped me put things into perspective, even when drawing some like really organic shapes, like people like c taking all the different parts of a person, like torso, head, neck, upper arm, lower arm, that kind of thing, and turning it into um, a box really helps with kind of like tilting things around. Because when you think of it as an organic shape, it can be really difficult to like picture that, that different side where it's a lot easier to think of it in like uh, like rotating in in 3d space if you think of it in like a block or a square or a box not a square a square would be flat anyways okay uh do you have any other questions ink is there anything i didn't cover there um That covers it. Awesome. Well, thank you for submitting. All right. Pigment. Let's go. Okay. So let's see. What were your notes? Um, so the first two are character designs for your D&D campaign and, a, and you have a comic page. Okay. Okay. Apara is a future archivist the party will meet and form an allyship with. And then the next one is a guard of a princess. Okay, general critiques as usual, specifically no opinions on the com comic page and colors. Okay, awesome. We love a cool bird person. So yeah, I do love this. So this is, it looks like a vulture. I'm confused. Do we have to submit beforehand? Yeah. So we do our, um, we do these once a month and we have our submissions, um, like a week to a couple days in advance, just so that we have time to review everything. If you would like, like more detailed information, we have a link to our, um, our Patreon in the description and you should be able to, um, 
uh, read about everything there and all the perks and stuff. She's based on a red bearded vulture. I love her. She is good. Also, we stand vultures. They are good friends who get rid of parasites. Um, okay. Um, so let me see. Um, yeah, so I love the through line of these like gorgeous red feathers. Um, like I love these little tassels here. I like how it comes down through the wings. Um, I like how there's a bit of like a reminiscence of like the beak shape in the scythe. Um, and yeah, the head just looks fantastic. Yeah, really great shape work. Um, um, Hum, hum, hum. Yeah, so I think with the costume, so overall I think the design really works. I love the wings, I love the scythe with the like lantern on the end, that's so cool. Um, I think the, there's some, something feels off about parts of the costume. I find like the top half, the bodice and this little like cloak cowl piece, um, feel a little like bland. I feel like you have like this great opportunity with like these triangle shapes and like um, leaning into this kind of like jagged triangle look. Uh, and like I understand bringing in these like softer shapes, like the um, the kind of round circles, uh, the little beads and stuff, and this kind of rounder shape for the cowl. Because um, it, I feel like this character can look very menacing if you really leaned into, like, the triangle shapes. Um, especially because, like, that face is, like, very, very villain material. <laughs> but this character is, like, more like an ally, right? Um, I'm tired of vulture slander. Right? Vultures are so good. They get rid of, like... What is it? Anthrax or something? Something like that? They they get rid of it. They're great. Um, she's basically my world's Grim Reaper. Oh, so then you could totally like lean into the 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 kind of intimidation factor. <laughs> um, but yeah, but I feel like there's just something. It's not quite hitting. Like I feel like. I'd love to see maybe more like layering and overlap and maybe leaning into some kind of like long triangle shapes, like kind of following the the line of the feathers on the face and kind of like pulling down into them, like um, maybe like a longer cloak that maybe like splits down the middle. You could do something interesting with like long sleeves that kind of have like a slit so that like her arms can still come out. Um, like I think it's fine if her arms are bare, for example. She's going to be antagonistic at first when one player gets her as a warlock patron. Okay. Okay, so you could definitely lean into the intimidation. I think what would be really interesting is, like, for that kind of, like, effect, you could... Uh, obviously, like, don't lean into it if you're not into this idea. But what you could do is give her, like, a very, like outward intimidating kind of like presence and costume i think her presence wise like she has it especially with like the big wings and the giant weapon and like the the intense eyes and stuff but you could do like give her like a very jagged cloak you could like really bring in these like jagged triangle shapes and like um like black diamonds and uh give it like kind of fiery edges or decoration or something and you can make it very big you can make it kind of spiky looking it could even be made of out of like black and red feathers um uh and then underneath you could have this like this kind of circle 
pattern going on like you could have these beads underneath um and this kind of like underdress uh apron thing tunic thing where you have like i really like this pattern of like the triangles and the circles and stuff but underneath she has this more kind of like plain dress as you kind of like get to know her more and she becomes like the patron like yeah she could be you can see underneath she has this more kind of like gentle side uh but at first she like looks scary as heck um that's something i want to work on doing more totally like it it, it really helps when you understand like where your character is coming from in your story because that gives you so many like great jumping off points like for example here you have this character who's an antagonist so they can look threatening and then underneath they can be sweet you could have the opposite where you have a character who looks very soft and inviting but underneath they have like some maybe jagged edges or there's like some pieces that feel like a like a red flag i don't know in their design you'd have to sing out this character but anyways yeah so i think that's a that's a great you have a great jumping off point here for that stuff um yeah but i like the general shape i like how like with her head um i like how it it it's kind of like it's not quite like a triangle triangle but i like how it's like um more slender at the top and then kind of like fans out i think you could lean into that for her silhouette for the rest of her because you have it here like i like how it you know the skirt like flares out and stuff i think you just need to push it more yeah you could even because with your reference you could even play into like some of this uh like the dark feathers with this kind of like red the pin going through the center and doing some kind of gradients or like i don't know whether it'd be like stitching on the clothing but anyways i think there's a lot you could play around with there um does that cover everything for this one can move on to the next one because i know you're on break and i don't know how long you have for that that's it awesome okay so this one is a knight for a princess or a guard for a princess um who's been lost in a recent airship crash and asks the party for help finding her okay um so yeah definitely getting dragon vibes <laughs> from the all the decorations and stuff on the armor and through like the tail and the horns um yeah i also really like the pattern going on with the kind of like mesh chain mail um like overskirt stuff on the armor that's really nice um yeah and there's also some very like moon vibes going on like i really like the shape this like crescent shape on the halberd um there's some like obviously there's this like moon motif on the the shield um yeah and i really like the color scheme as well i really like her using all these like dark rich blues and then you have these kind of pops of like silver and gold to kind of like stand out against everything i think that works really well um the stance is also very fluid for the character the kingdom's ruled by a dragon that's depicted on his shield. Ah, yes. Um, I would. So I think there's a few things like, I think this is like a really strong start, but I feel like there's some places where you could add some more, um, kind of like flares and ornateness to really kind of like tighten it up. So for example, I love this like gold kind of stitching on the hem of his like uh, skirt thing, armor skirt thing, I forget what it's called. <laughs> um, where like you have all this very like dark blue up here with like um, his like undershirt and then the, the, the plate, the chest plate. 
sets where I feel like you could go in and you could add some more of this kind of like fine detailing of gold. It could be like stitching on his undershirt, like around the collar and down the the hem. Um, and even some, just like some simple lines. Like I like how you have this kind of like uh, diamond and dots and stuff coming around the belt. Like just bringing some, a little bit of that through the chest plate. Um, you could definitely go too overboard with it. Um, but I think if you just add it in like maybe a line here or like a little ornate piece here and there, I think that would really help kind of like brighten up the center of him and make it kind of match the the detail going on with like the bottom half of his armor. I would also say I love the design on the shield, but I think what would help. So right now it feels like the, the shield feels very flat and it feels like there's been like a coat of paint put on the, the front. Um, I think you could make it feel more 3D by like adding in um, like something around the edges, like some beveling or something. Um, you could because I see there's like some shine on it so it feels a bit 3D but maybe adding in like just a couple shadows here and there to make this feel more like beveled and like carved on or shaped on or whatever um because it feels a little flat but I think I think adding in just some more little details here and there would really help kind of make it feel more 3D and even if the shield is flat and this is a design like painted on I think you just need some like I don't know, like a line and some shadow to show just kind of like the form of the shield. Um, similar to like, you have some very simple lines going on in the the detail of like the point of the halberd. Um, just similar kind of treatment for the shield. Um, I also think his shoes feel a little out of place. They look very much like sneakers compared to the rest of his look. That is very like nightly um where I think yeah I'd give it the same treatment as like the chest plate like bringing in some more kind of like plating and um intricacy the same colors uh maybe putting in like some more kind of like buckles and straps that would help a lot um like it's fine if they're they're small like this and you because you get lots of bend at the ankle which is good um but yeah but they feel a little out of place compared to the rest of his outfit i need to learn how to render metal it's hard i understand it is tough <laughs> um the silver on his shoes are metal guards oh i see i see hmm It could help. Hmm. Maybe there needs to be some more plating on the back, like a kind of heel piece. It's hard because I know like, I don't know, medieval style shoes are very simple. <laughs> um. But yeah, I think it's just the placement of the metal where it feels very much like shoelaces on a sneaker. Yeah, so I think you just need to play around with maybe the shape or the placement. I think that would help out a lot. Um, but yeah, otherwise everything looks great. Do you have any other questions about it? That's it. Awesome. All right, so we'll move on to your comic page, which you said you wanted, like, the most attention. Um, okay, so you wanted to know about the colors for the comic page. Um, so starting off, the contrast in this top panel is, like, chef kiss, um, where I love the saturation going on with, like, the goddess's, um, like skin and hands it really helps like the characters pop against it it really pops against this black background you've got great contrast on your um your text at the top for this caption um and i'm finding that contrast is getting lost in other panels um i think it works well here 
where um, she's looking down at the world. Uh, the text on this globe is like great, great contrast there. I like the colors that you've used here. They mix really well with the kind of spacey purples and blues. Um, but I'm finding with these green panels, uh, like the green, it's hard because the green you've chosen here for this um, call out panel, it's nice and bright. So it stands out well against um, like the background of the other panels, but this text the white does not work very well on it. Like it, you need higher contrast there. I would use black um, for that. I don't know if the green was a good pick. It's hard because it it works really well against the backgrounds. Like I said, like it it stands out really well against the um, like the purples and the darkness. Uh, I think what you're missing here is just contrast within these two green panels. So like you need to use some dark text here on the however. I'd also pull it up a little bit. It feels a little bit close to the the uh, the bottom edge here. Um, but yeah, I would use black text. You could even make it larger to give it more um, uh, just more shape, I guess, to like pop out more. Um, and then same with here. So again, the white text on these colors, uh, it's just the contrast isn't there. I would use a dark color, possibly, or a thicker outline um, on the, the uh, colors. Or on the text, sorry. <laughs> um, and I'm finding with these characters, like I like how you've got them very silhouetted. Uh, and I like the variance, like you're using like some lighter greens and then some mid-tones and then some darker ones at the front, like, like keep that essence to it. Like that looks great. But I think the con, you need higher contrast there where you need to go darker with all these colors. Um, it's hard cause you, you don't want it to be too dark cause then it will blend in with the space background behind this panel. Yeah, what I would do, if I were you, I might brighten up this background a little bit. So, like, the, the green gradient going on. Like, brighten it up even a little bit more. So, it's more on the lighter side. You could even um, create more contrast in the gradient. So, like, up here it's, like, really light. And then it gets, like, a little bit darker than you have it here down at the bottom. I think that could really work. Like, keep it light, 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 light. And then really dark right at the corners to get that vignette effect you have. Which I think works really well for this, like, the vibe of the the, the humans fighting. Um, and then you really need to up the contrast. So these characters who are fighting at the front, you need to go, like, really dark. Um, and then probably really, really light as it goes back. And you, you probably need to play with the levels here, depending on how you change the background. Um... Yeah, and then depending on where your color range is, like value-wise, you'll need to play around with the text. Because like, if it's really light, you need to um, use dark text. And if it turns out really dark, you can keep... Oh my god, I'm sorry. You, need to, you can keep your, your light text. Contrast my greatest enemy one day, I'll figure it out. It's so hard. It's one thing I struggled with a lot. I used to go like really light with everything. Um... Um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. Because like I said, the green panels contrast really well with the purple background panels, and those have really great contrast in them. It's just within those panels needs to be fiddled around with. Hi, Fitz. Welcome. I'm glad I was not the only one who was late to the stream. <laughs> I'm glad a couple people have also shown up late. It's a sleepy Saturday. Okay, guys. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I really 
What I really like about this panel, though, that, like, I wouldn't want you to lose when you adjust the colors is I love that kind of, like, misty vignette effect where I like how these kind of characters kind of fade in and out of this kind of, like, mist, the soft mist you've got going on at the bottom. So, like, hold on to that. That's such a nice effect. Yeah. Um, I would also, if you're able to, possibly make this panel a little bit shorter. Like I just, the the placement of this text here for this middle panel, um, again, it feels a little tight at the bottom and close to this panel. Um, if you could move this panel or like uh, squash it a little bit so that this text has a bit more room to, to breathe. I think that would be the only other thing. Yeah, otherwise this is looking fantastic. Um... Yeah. Do you have any other questions? Is there anything I didn't cover or that you wanted to know? Oh, I should also say the flow of this is really great. I love how you're, you flow really well between like the placement of the text and the visuals like it it really kind of brings you around through the panel so that's what done really well that's all good no problem well good luck with the rest of your work day thanks for thanks for submitting um okay who would like to go next so we've done a few so we have fits we have mouth we have Lesbian and Coral. Can I go next? Sure. Um, all right. What did you write? Uh, I'd like feedback on anatomy and posing for one and two and my character design for two and three. Okay. Yeah, Fitz, you can go after. No problem. Okay, so we'll do Lesbian, and then Fitz, and then Kuro, and then Mouth. I don't know if Mouth is here. So maybe we could look at his last. Um, okay, so. For this first one, you're looking at anatomy and posing. Okay. So, posing-wise, um... This is some old school D and D style art because I felt like it. Nice, love it. Mouth oh, is having a very sleepy Saturday. Exactly, <laughs> feeling the vibes. Um. All right, so anatomy wise, okay. So I really like how you've used the shadows to really fill out the forms, like. You can see, like, the musculature on the monster. Um, you can see kind of, like, the planes of the face where we see, like, under the chin and, like, behind the head. Um, and there's definitely this, like, shadow kind of coming from this uh, kind of back corner here. Or I guess the front, foreground corner. <laughs> um, and I like how you kind of carved out all the different shapes of the, the monster. Um, and really kind of rendered out, uh, rendered it out in, like, a 3D way. And same with like the placement of like the ground shadows, um, I think it works really well with kind of making things feel very solid and voluminous. So that's awesome. Um, the posing, uh, I really like it on this knight character. It, you've got this great kind of like dynamic uh, line of motion from the like the stance of the legs and the arms where like the force is really going into holding up this shield it feels very dynamic um the troll ogre creature feels very the pose feels very relaxed in comparison
I think why it feels relaxed is because we're seeing it very much from the front where it looks like it's just kind of stepping forward and like going like bah where I feel like a more kind of dynamic really forceful way to do it would be maybe to like uh, turn the body yeah like it, it looks like it's swatting a bug kind of thing like it's very like oh whatever but like <laughs> where like um I think it could be more dynamic if it there's a few different ways you could do it you could keep a simple way to do it I think would be switch the ogre sword into the other hand and kind of do like a kind of reach kind of thing where it's like up like this so where it's it's arm will be raised on this side we'll see that kind of like stretch of muscle across like the the shoulders and um you can have this kind of like diagonal kind of uh, curved through line where the line of motion will be like down towards this character um and you can get some good kind of like crossways diagonal posing with it if that makes sense you could also do it the other way so maybe we're seeing more of its side and back and we see this arm kind of winding back um, and again, it would be kind of like this curved downward motion. Um, yeah, so I think that would help you with giving it that really dynamic, forceful pose. Um, the other thing I would say is for this composition, we need more room at the bottom. It's very cut off right now where I really like how we're getting this view of like the top of this like dungeon. I like the, is that a moon I'm seeing? It's horrifying and I love it, but, <laughs> but yeah, I like all these kind of details around it, but at the bottom it's like cut off. So it, it feels very stunted and like, I'd like to see more, more of the foreground where we get to see like a little bit more space kind of behind the night and the ogre, um, and just get a bit more breathing room. That's all. It's a nasty, nasty moon. <laughs> so nasty. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think that would help you out a lot. Compositionally. Um, yeah. Do you have any other questions about this one? Is there anything I didn't cover there? That's about all you wanted to know. Okay, awesome. So your next one. So you were looking again at posing and anatomy and also the design. Okay. So the design is so cute. For one, adorable uwu. Um, okay. So. The first off, I really love, you know, close up on this. I really love the rendering on the face um, and the hair where I love like these kind of like dark shadows that you've used some lines to really show like the volume. Um, you've done some really great work with like using the shadow to really carve out the shape of say like this uh, little captain's hat. Um, so that's great. I think you've done a really great job with like the details and then keeping the face nice and bright. Uh, that works just really nicely and the style is so cute. Um, I think... I also think you've done a really great job with the skirt in the same way where I really like how you've used... You've really like shaped out the ruffles in the shirt it feels very er, the shirt the skirt it feels very it has lots of shape to it like i like um these little rectangles of light that you have going on and i like how you've um shown like the folds in the skirt using your line work um i'm prepared to hear about the legs so i think the legs are on the right track 
<laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I was nervous about the, the lipstick. I rarely wear lipstick. <laughs> um, but yes, the legs, you've done a great job with like the rendering. Like, again, I like the effect that you've used with, like, same as, like, above with the face and stuff, where you've used these, like, dark shadows to carve out, like, the kneecaps, and then you're using your kind of mid-tone shadow to really carve out the other um, shapes. Uh, I think what's throwing it off is it's missing some of the detail that, like, the nice detail you had, say, like, on the skirt and the clothing and the face, where they feel a little bit plain in comparison. I think they just need to be like neatened up and even bringing in some of like these more kind of like detailed shadows. Like in the hair, you have these like lovely little tiny shadows to really show like the fluffiness in the hair, for example, and like showing the fold of the cap. Whereas like on her legs, they feel very It, it, like there's just less detail going on like I'd love to see kind of like um maybe a little bit of a highlight on the top of like um her sock or her shoe like I think this is part of her shoe but um and then maybe showing some more carving out the the top of the kneecap with a highlight kind of how you've done here but like just a little bit more attention to detail um because I feel like you've got the general shape, like, carved out here. And then it just needs to be kind of, like, tightened up and added some more detail. Um, I also think, anatomy-wise, her feet are placing a little bit strangely. So this one here feels a bit more on the ground. Um, whereas this one feels a little bit off. <laughs> it looks like it's floating in space and not really, like, standing on anything. <laughs> um, I think the reason that is... So if you look at this front foot here um you have some foreshortening going on where we're seeing like uh the kind of top of this like um shoe strap uh and it has this um uh it's like we're seeing the front of a cylinder if that makes sense um there's also some overlap here and some foreshortening between like the front of the the shoe we're seeing kind of the heel which is more condensed because it's farther back um and you have this kind of like planted flatness it feels like it's planted on the ground whereas like here we're seeing the top of her foot whereas like um the way it would land even if she's like stepping so say like her toe would be compressed and then uh her heel would be in the air you'd see that like compression of the toe and you'd see so the toe would be very compressed it would be at the front and then we'd see the top of the foot come up if that makes sense like this but the front of her foot would still be planted the way that this foot is and then we just see the rest of her foot kind of like pulled up hopefully that makes sense a really great way to plant your characters on the ground is to draw an x below them or a grid um that would align with the grid of the ground if that makes sense so like um with the way she's standing um you could almost follow, like, for example here, you could follow the line of the bottom of her shoe. So, like, this would be um, the direction of one of your, your axes. And then, uh, you know, depending on where the, the flooring is, you do another X. And that just really helps you, like, plant your character. So, like, I tend to do a line kind of, like, right below the arch of their feet and then place the the other line kind of wherever you need it depending on the the perspective and angle it takes some practice but it really helps with like planting your characters on the ground um the only other thing anatomy wise is i find her shoulders are a bit too flat there's a lot of detail going on with like her neck and her clavicle but then like her shoulders feel very like flattened and condensed um and they just need a bit more shape to them because you can keep the the really kind of like cutesy simplified look to her. But yeah, her shoulders just need a bit more shape to them. <laughs> Do some foot studies? Heck yeah. <laughs> Never ignore your feet. Um, okay, so I'll move on to the design stuff. So the design is super cute. I really like the sailor 
inspiration to her her cute little dress and stuff like the captain hat is adorable um i love the kind of like sailor cut you know that like you know you always think of like the sailor scout uniforms but like you know that old kind of sailor look which is really cute um but it's also mixed with this very like girly you know cutesy dress as well um I'm trying to think of like I think there's some detail work you could add in that would really like spiff spiff up the design a little bit because I love the little anchor on the captain hat like that's such a cute touch I'd love to see maybe like an anchor motif on like the hem of the skirt for example or some other kind of like nautical symbol I don't know what you'd choose you could do like seabirds or um like a like a ship wheel or something like that I don't know seashells i don't know something <laughs> i'm sure you could find lots of inspiration but like maybe some little lines on like the collar of the shirt um some little motifs or stitching or something in the skirt just something like that to kind of like pull in the sailor stuff more um but i think the general shape of everything is great i just would love to see those more little details and motifs yeah yeah so hopefully that is helpful is there any questions you had about this That covers it. Awesome. All right. So your final one, you're looking at design. Okay. So you've done a really good job. Sorry, just pulling off the conversation from the last one. You've done a really good job with planting the feet here. So we're seeing like, um, I think if you added in more detail, it would, it would be even better. But like these feet feel like they're planted on the same surface so like even though her heel is like pulling up a little bit on this foot because it looks like she's putting her weight on this front foot oh sorry you can't see my cursor <laughs> on this front foot is where the weight is and then she's like lifting this foot up so like even though this heel probably is not on the ground you can still see that like the front of the foot is planted on the same kind of like plane so hopefully that makes sense i think this is a good like jumping off point okay phew i know how to do it <laughs> You got this. I know you have it in you. <laughs> um, all right. Same. Again, I think this is a really good example of, like, the shoulders being very, like, firm. Um, whereas, like, in the previous one, I said they were kind of, like, smushed. Um, I'm finding the neck is, like, a smidge too long. So I think it's, it's being elongated because you have this, like, um, the, like, the collar piece on the suit where uh, her chin would probably be a little bit closer to it, maybe even um, over top of it a little bit. Um, but minor nitpick. Of course I believe in you. I believe in all of you. <laughs> you all do amazing work. <laughs> it's just my job to nitpick. <laughs> um, um, but anyways, otherwise everything is rendered really really well i like how you can tell that this character is very muscular from the little details of like the muscles and shadows and stuff that you have going on um i love the fluffy hair that's adorable um okay and as for design i think you've got a very strong through line with the these kind of triangle shapes going on like i love the um these kind of v shapes like on the belt uh, and then it goes down into the boots um, you see it in the collar, uh, and all the kind of general shapes that make up the outfit. We love a good nitpick. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> I hope so. Um, uh, right, but, um, all the shapes kind of have that vibe to them. They all have that kind of V shape, even if they're not, um, like directly the same direction so for example like the the kind of color blocking here where you have the dark blue and then the light blue in, in the center like it still has the vibe of like the v shape even though it's not like this exact v shape 
Um, yeah, and just throughout, it, it, it really echoes throughout. Like, I can see there's, like, the V-shape on the... The ankles, um, you get it from like the cut of the red on the bust. Um, same with just like the cut of the shirt is kind of like a diamond V kind of shape because we see the arms and stuff. Um, uh, I think what would be a nice touch, um, again, just some tightening up of things because I think generally like the design is like there and awesome. Um, I would recommend, uh, so I love the gloves for one, cause it really kind of brings up, brings the torso together, I guess, like the upper half of the character together. I would recommend bringing in some of this like dark blue color blocking, whether it's just like, I don't know, a, a piece, like maybe on the inner side of the glove. I don't know, whatever you decide, just bring in a little bit of that blue, um, just to get some nice contrast on the arms there. Uh, and I'd also recommend bringing in this, um, You'd have to play around with how much you want to bring in, but I'd love to see some more of this kind of, like, small detailing of, like, the red and blue stripes, like, into the ankles and the shoes. Like, whether that's, like, the sole of the shoe is maybe, like, the red and the blue or, like, the ankle bit. I don't know. You'd have to play around with it. But bringing that in more. Um, and I also wonder if there's some kind of headpiece you could bring in. Um, you could do... I don't know if you want to do, like... Uh, like a hair clip or maybe like an earpiece that could look kind of futuristic and maybe have that v-shape um, or a headband or a tiara I don't know <laughs> like Sailor Moon um, but just something to bring it into the head of the character as well I think would really help you out even if it's just earrings too like something really small like a barrette or an earring or something um, depending on how this character behaves but yeah just kind of filling out the details a little bit yeah. Um, but otherwise, yeah, colors are great. Contrast is great. Great shape work. Um, did you have any other questions about this? This seems like a superhero character, I'm assuming. A starship pilot? Oh, I love it. <laughs> I support her. I think that covers it. Awesome. Well, thank you for submitting. All right. Fitz. Fitz, my friend. Where are you? All right, so you're looking for general critiques? <laughs> what are your submissions to Spaceman? Oh hell yeah. Listen, we love space. Okay, so this first, so you're looking for general critique. This first one is a work in progress. Not everything's done. And you're just working on characters in more kind of like dynamic poses and composition. Is that what you're saying? Um, so, it is very dynamic. There's lots of movement going on between the characters, especially these two at the side, the blue and the purple. Um, where I like how they've got this kind of like curve shape going on around the character at the bottom. Um, yeah, just lots of movement, just from, like, the flow of, like, the hair on the blue character, the the movement of, like, the jacket on the purple character, along with just, like, the way they're posed. It's, it's really nice. It creates a lot of, like, dynamicness and movement. Um, I think it especially shines on your blue character. I really like the... You've done a good job perspective-wise, where... Because they're leaned forward, we're seeing kind of like the top of their chest and shoulders um, in perspective. They go back at their waist and then their knees come forward again and their feet are like forward a little bit. So great work, like perspective and anatomy wise on that one. Um, and I really like how they kind of fit like a puzzle piece around the kind of orange red character or the peachy character. 
Um, not to say overlap is bad. Overlap is good, obviously, because it creates dynamicness. Um, they're an unlikely friend group. Very good. <laughs> um, it's got very like, uh, like a, what would you call it? Like, like a psycho pop RPG <laughs> game. <laughs> These are our main characters that form the party. Um, anyways, I think you could push that dynamicness a little bit with like your, uh, purple character. Where, like, the, uh, the chest and shoulders and arms are there. But I feel like you could cur almost curve, like, their torso and back a little bit more. If that makes sense. Like, kind of lean into the curve a little bit. Um, I think it would just mean bringing the hips down a little bit. And you'd have to move, like, I think you could keep, say, this foot where it is. And then just, like... Bring the hips down a little bit and maybe adjust this this uh, front leg a little bit, but otherwise, like it's there. Um, and I think you also have the perspective down on the peachy character in the front, where we have like we're seeing like her face from like head on, <laughs> um, and then like the tops of the shoulders, and I like how the hand goes back and like the coat overlaps. Um, I think you could do a little bit more overlap with the knees, like a little bit more foreshortening. So we see kind of like, it's hard because her, you are, we are seeing the tops of her legs. But I feel like from the angle we're at, we'd see maybe like a little bit more of the front of her knees. So maybe like a little bit of foreshortening there, if that makes sense. Kind of bring her legs forward a bit. Um, just like a little bit though. Maybe squish the legs. Yeah, yeah. Like just a little bit. Um. I also really like the detail on like the inside of her jacket where you see it kind of like hugging the her arm and we see like the the kind of inside of the jacket and then the outside like that's really nice detail work really great movement here like I feel the same about like the blue one's hair like the folds in the jacket here like just really great stuff really great detail work um that adds like a lot of nice movement to things um Yeah. I might add a little bit more space at the bottom beneath the peach girl. Like just uh, maybe like a half inch or something. Quarter inch. I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say centimeter, but I realize. I don't know if you guys work in centimeters. I was going to say add like a centimeter and a half at the bottom. <laughs> Um, uh, but yeah, just a little bit more space, give some breathing room, because you have lots of nice, like, breathing room at the top. Um, but, like, not too much, because then I feel like the characters would be kind of out of place. But yeah. Um, I think that's it. Did you have any other questions about this? Anything I didn't cover there? I know centimeters a distant amount because of foreign doll sizing. Nice. Perfect. See, I know inches because whenever you're printing something, it's always in inches. <laughs> There's always something, right? It's weird in Canada because, like, we use centimeters when I'm just talking to someone. But we use, like, you know, if I was asking for, like, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, I was taught centimeters, but then when we're talking about height, we use feet and inches. Like, I do not know my height in meters or centimeters. <laughs> and then with printing, I know it all in inches. It's weird. That's it? Okay. Awesome. I'll do the next one. Is this our spaceman? Um, okay. So, okay. So, yeah. So, this is for an RPG. 
the sci-fi setting. His name is Ajax, and he's an inventor. I love him. Ajax, we stand. Um, okay, so I am definitely getting Spaceman vibes. <laughs> um, I think I'm mostly getting it from the, well, these power gauntlet things. The tubing kind of wire motif and then the, the freaking glasses. Like the, how tall are you in feet? I am 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five, I believe. Somewhere around there. Um, cause yeah, I don't know what that is in centimeters. Anyways, <laughs> sorry. Um, but yeah, anyways, the, the outfit is very sci-fi, very, um, uh, what would you call it? It's just got that vibe. It's got spaceman vibes. Um, okay, so I really like what you've got going on contrast wise. Um, I love the color blocking of like the pink and the black and uh, white, where everything is very like sectioned. It feels, it keeps everything looking very sharp. It keeps everything very um, separated and like there's lots of like little things going on like with the wires there's like little triangle call outs and stuff on the gauntlets um you've got like wires coming out the back there's like um this like backpack straps and stuff but it all feels very there's even like sections to the horns and stuff but it, it feel it makes it feel very Sorry, what I'm trying to say is there's a lot going on, but because of the use of the shapes, where it, it feels almost like there's like a pattern to it, I guess, uh, where it, it, it still all makes sense. It doesn't feel too cluttered. I'm around 1.6 meters. Okay, amazing. Thank you. I will try to remember that. <laughs> um... But yeah, uh, yeah, just the way everything is separated uh, with contrast, it, it keeps it feeling very together. I also like how you have these nice little blocks with uh, the black. Um, they, they really help kind of like bring it together. There's some good echoing going on where like, I really like how, so he's got like this dark hair um, then the next big, big chunk of black is, like, the, the shirt bodice area. And then the gloves is, like, another big section each. And then we also have kind of the underside of the, the skirt, uh, cloak thing as well. Um, I think those could be pushed a little bit more. So I honestly might make... So I like how you have this kind of like triangle shape on the back of the gauntlet. I would almost make it wider. So like keep that triangle kind of diamond shape, but make it a bit bigger so that you have another kind of like big block of black like you have on the chest and the hair. And then same with the underside of the skirt. Like just it needs to be like a little bit bigger. It's hard because I wouldn't want to lose your silhouette that you have going on, but like just a little bit more black showing or maybe even just like, um, maybe you need to add some like black diamonds or something on the feet, maybe as like a uh, ankle piece or something. I don't know, but just bringing that back in because I think that would pull it together a little bit more and you'd have these nice little spots of like uh, high contrast black to like look at among all the pink and white. Yeah. But otherwise, this is great. It feels really well balanced. Um, yeah, I love I love the jagged kind of triangle shapes, especially in like the horns and like through the outfit. It makes it feel very like electric and very sharp. Um, he gives me very sassy vibes. <laughs> he feels like adventurous and spunky. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, the pose is also very dynamic. I really like the like the raised leg and the kind of like lifting onto his heel. It feels very. It's got lots of movement. It's very dynamic, very energetic, um, and there's a good through line with the the movement. So there's like a nice kind of like curve following the spine and like echoed by the glove, and then you have this nice kind of like cross um, line of movement as well. So yeah, that's really great. Do you have any questions about this one? Anything you would like to know? Not that you can think of. Awesome. Thank you. Now we'll move on to the last one. <laughs> this me of the vine where it's like, what do you have? A knife! <laughs> no! <laughs> Which I quote on the daily. <laughs> Who gave this child a knife? Okay, so you draw your pet as a person. This is my cat Fig as a human. Adorable. Do not give Fig a knife. Never give a cat a knife. Um, but I do love it. Okay, so adorable for one. Um, I love the little hair buns as the little cat ears. Um, I do love the, the knife because, you know, cats rip things up and are little murderers or whatever, but they're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> destructive enough without a knife. See, cats come built with knives on their little paws. So, it's built in. <laughs> um, yeah, so general critique stuff. Um, the color palette is very consistent. Obviously, you've got, like, your blues. You're using kind of, like, a cream color. Um, and then you have these, like, kind of chocolatey browns throughout. My wrist can confirm that, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and there's some good balancing going on. I like the touch of, like, the blue eyes and then the ribbon and the jacket. Um, I think the blue could be brought into, like, the socks a little bit. Um, whether it's maybe, like, another bow, say, like, on the shoes or, like, a, um, a ribbon on the socks or something or a stripe. I don't know. Just bringing in that blue to the bottom, I think, would help out a lot um, with the balance. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's all the shapes are really great. Um, the folding on the clothing is awesome. There's lots of nice movement in the hair. Like, I like the, the fluffy little bangs. Um, yeah, and there's a nice little, little cat silhouette with the hair. That's adorable. Um, I also love the little three mouth. It's very cat like. <laughs> um, Did you have any questions about it? Was there anything specific you were looking for? I do like the expression at the bottom. It's very cat-like. My cat also will lean on something they've destroyed and go meow. Look all cute. And you can't stay mad. How's the anatomy looking? And is the background too busy? Um, Anatomy-wise, I think everything looks good. Like, um, you've obviously given her, like, a very, like, childish figure. Uh, with, like, you know, the big head and, like, the small shoulders and stuff. Um, and, like, the squat body. So I don't think there's anything off there. Um, the posing looks good. 
Yeah, I don't see any problems with the anatomy. Um, I do find the background a little bit busy. Like, I think there's just, like, a few too many elements going on. Because, like, I like the hearts, um, kind of around the head. And I like the writing for Fig and then the little kind of, like, highlight on it. And even the sparkle on the knife. But I find, like, the little outlines you have going on, they just feel like they're a little bit too much. I feel like you could get, like, a similar effect, but, like, it could feel a bit more um, consistent as if maybe you, like, made this outline around everything, like, a little bit thicker. Um... Yeah, I think it's just these, like, little outlines that feel, like, a little bit too much. But I think you could keep these, like, little, like, attention flares and the hearts and the fig. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. Because I feel like with these, like, little background details, like, they're really cute. You could either go, like, you could make it, like, super patterned so, like, everything is, like, really busy. Or you could go kind of, like, sticker sheet mode, I guess. Where, like, if you imagine this as like a little sticker sheet, you could have other little shapes like paw prints or like little knives or something and more little hearts. It could be interesting. You'd have to see if you like it though. Yeah. Was there anything else? Anything I didn't cover? That's good. Awesome. Well, thank you for submitting. All right, Crow. Let's hacking go. All right. All right. So this is your character, Delta. Do you want to crit on his design? Okay. Now oh, I gotta go eat breakfast. Hell yeah. Enjoy your breakfast. Fry my OCs? I will. I'm gonna roast them. Alright. Oh, sh snap. We love a pansexual. Okay. Um, so... I'm guessing this is from your, your story where, like, the characters are in that, like, hell dimension. I think. Unless I'm mistaking it. All right. So. Um, okay. So, dragon, demon, fire shields, cat-like fighting style. Very good. Okay, and his wings are always out. Deity Wars, that's it, that's it. Um, okay, so... Yeah, I really like the use of the scales. I especially like how 3D they feel, especially on the feet. And I think the feet are, like, really awesome in this. I like how they're, they're like, just these big, like, meaty claws. I think you've done a good job with, like, um putting them on the uh, like the surface of the the, the floor does that make sense placing it well <laughs> feels very like on a surface um but yeah but i like the 3d aspect of them i think it adds like some good texture to the character because like i really like it on like the forearms and like the little neck pieces and stuff um and it's really great on the the legs i feel like it adds just like some good contrast there 
Um, it brings everything together really well. I'd honestly love to see it more on him, like more kind of like larger shoulder pieces, possibly um, more on the forearms. Uh, yeah, I think that would really uh, bring it together really well. Um, I think honestly, with the pattern you have on the stomach and the chest, I'm wondering if like, it might be better to fill it out more, like create more of a defined shape. So like you could do, I don't know, you could do like a V on the chest or something or like a, a diamond. I'm not sure what you'd want to do, but like maybe fill out the chest more. You could, um, uh, yeah, I think, cause I really like the look of it when it's these big kind of filled areas and I, I'd like to see more of it on the torso cause it feels a little bit sparse. A heart shape? Yeah, a heart like shape could work too. It depends on what you want to go with because you could do like a full kind of like mantle almost like a shoulder to chest piece kind of thing with it. I don't know. It depends on what you want to do. Um. Yeah, I like the shape on the wings. I like how angular they are. Um, I think you could keep... Instead of chest hair, he's got scales. Okay, I kind of am in love with that idea. <laughs> Personally. <laughs> um, anyways, what I was saying is I think... So I really like the kind of like jagged... Um, geometricalness of like the scales and the diamond shapes he's got going on it's even in his wings where like they're very uh like geometric straight cut where like i'd love to see that pulled into the horns more like make them more jagged less round and soft because i think he's got a lot to him that is very round which is interesting like he's got like a very round face he's got like a round shape to the hair there's like cur curves on his ears um he's got like a soft tummy that kind of thing where, like, I think you can kind of play with that, where these kind of, like, darker parts, like the horns and the scales and stuff, are very sharp. And then maybe keep, like, some of that softness in the hair and in the body shape. I think there's something you could play with there. I also really like the lines coming off of the, the eyes and connecting with the mouth. It creates just, like, a really nice effect, um, I guess, where it frames the face. Um, which is very interesting. Um, I'm not so sure about the cross hatching on the ears. I kind of like it on the face. It kind of feels like a beard almost. <laughs> like it's interesting. It's an interesting texture. I'm not sure about the ears. You could do some interesting things with like framing more things out with these lines. Like maybe... Uh, I don't know, putting tops on the ears or something with a line. I'm not sure. I think you could play around with that quite a bit with having maybe more lines on his arms or like on his chest. Um, yeah, play around with that. Bring that kind of motif of like having bits kind of like carved out. Uh, I think you could lean into that more. More stabby -less <laughs> coat hook. <laughs> yes, exactly. You understand. Um, yeah, and color wise, uh, I love the contrast between the orange and the blue, obviously, but it's good contrast. Um, I wonder if you could bring the red of his eyes through a little bit more, whether that's like maybe red tips to his claws or red tips to the scales, something like that, uh, just to bring it through a little bit more. And I think that like through his torso and the wings, it's a lot of the same. So like I would be careful because it could get hard to read depending on like what the, the scene is. So it might help to like, I don't know, adjust some of the colors, like maybe the, uh, the, like, the membrane between his, like, wings could be, like, a lighter color or something like that. Um, I just, yeah, I'd worry about 
the details kind of being lost across his torso and his wings. So just something to be careful of. It helps having like the pants because like it really sections off like his torso from his legs. But yeah, just something to watch out for where it could become kind of visually uh, cluttered because it all is very similar in uh, shape and color. Yeah, bringing red into the wings might work. Later, maybe more see-through and thinner. Yeah, that could work too. That could work too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, did you have any other questions about this one? Is there anything I didn't cover? You know how to make them better? Awesome. No problem. Okay, so the second piece is... A TNTK study piece? I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. Um, I'm looking for a crit on the coloring style. You might do a whole comic in it or maybe just the backgrounds. The comic is loosely based off my dog and how she hurts <laughs> the noses off her toys. Oh no. Um, okay, so it's... <laughs> Fun character designs and stuffing instead of blood because they're toy people. That's really cute. <laughs> it's crime comedy. I wanted to have a softer, softer, brighter style. Okay. <laughs> That's really fun. I like that idea. The nose thief killer. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I love it. Um. <laughs> Okay, uh, so the coloring style. Yeah, it's got a very, like... It's... I think the quality of the colors you've chosen, like, they're very bright. They're very pastel-y. It definitely feels very, like, toy-like. Um, it's so bright and, like, cute. And I really enjoy the textures that you're using, where... Everything has this kind of like bubbly textured effect on it. Um, it's kind of like, it reminds me of like, you know, when you use watercolor and you put like salt in it and it kind of like the color gets sucked away or pushed away from the salt. It has that kind of like texture to it. Um, uh, but yeah, it's really nice. It, get, it creates a lot of visual interest to it. Um, watercolor brushes are fun for textures. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it creates a lot of visual interest. I think it keeps things very bright because it looks like, um, you're using these kind of like bright, uh, filters and textures over top. Um, but yeah, there, you, in your backgrounds, especially, you still got some good contrast going on. Like the sky is very light. Then the buildings are darker and you're using different colors to like really carve out the shadows and forms and stuff. Um, but it's all still very bright and pastel -y and cute. Um, yeah, and then I like how your characters are all more like dark colors, so they stand out quite a bit. Um, there's a little bit of contrast trouble between here, this kind of like, it looks like dark tinted glass to me on this building, um, where... It's a little dark compared to everything else in the background and it feels very close to like this character's uh kind of values on like his 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 uh shoes and pants um so i'd lighten that up a little bit and i think you can still get the idea that it's like dark tinted glass but like brighten it up to a lighter color um and Hmm. 
So as for the coloring on the characters, they definitely meld well with the background. Like they feel treated the same as like the coloring on the background. I worry though that some of the texture might be too much. So like, for example, I think like in this character here, the hair, you're losing like some of the shape. Like I'm getting the fluffy texture from like the line work and some of the texturing, but it it feels a little bit muddy with how much like texture is going on. Same with like this character's coat, for example, um, and the pants were like, I wonder if it would help to like limit the texturing to say shadows. So you can have these like dark patches with shadows and they can have some of this texture maybe toned down a little bit. And then maybe your highlights are more flat. Would that make sense? I don't know. You'd have to play around with it. But I, I, I do worry about the textures on the characters being a little bit too busy and losing some of the form. So I think you have to be very careful with how you apply the texture. Um... But yeah, I like the vibes. <laughs> it's very cute and zany feeling. <laughs> it's got like as poppy. Oh, poppy. Yeah, bubby. Um. Don't are. She's a serial killer. <laughs> but he's a baby. He's a puppy. <laughs> Listen, we on it at Fitz's cat who had a knife. So, okay. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I was thinking. So I think you've done a good job with the backgrounds, with like the color leveling. Like it feels very consistent. It's got this very like cool color scheme going, and I do like how you're using orange on your and browns and stuff on your main characters to like make them stand out against the background. But it, there's something clashing. I'm not sure what it is. It might be that the oranges are like too red or too brown like there's something about them where like i feel like they need to be pulled to like a bit of a brighter yellowy orange or something there's just something there that's like not quite vibing with me so just be careful with the color clashing like try to keep them it's hard because you want your main characters to like stand out and be like high contrast and stuff so like i i like that you're using like um uh like an orange is a great choice because it really uh, contrast with the blues you've got going on in your background but I think it needs to be color leveled so it's a bit more on that kind of like colorful pastel-y oranges because right now it's a little bit of a muddy orange my hair is ginger and brown <laughs> I know I think you just got to bring a little bit more yellow into it I think it'll still read as like gingery and brown but yeah you just gotta color match the background, is all. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any other questions on this one? Blonde limb up. <laughs> it's a hard balance, listen. Ginger hair is difficult. Because if it goes too bright, it's blonde. And if it goes too dark, it's brown. It's hard. I understand. <laughs> all right so the third is another character design um okay so the first guy yazoo song is the current antagonist and rival in Mackie roll can I have crit on his design and perceived personality? You could ignore the rest of the team. <laughs> I'm too lazy to crop it. Listen, been there. 
I thought the bright green was gonna get called out on the hair. No, see the green works really well because you've got all these nice green and blues in the background. It's the orange that's that's clashing. <laughs> I'm keeping you on your toes, Kuro. Um. Okay. So for his design. Um, so I really like the posing and expression. He looks like, he looks like the cool rival. He's like, he's all cool and collected, you know? <laughs> um, and tough. He gives that vibe just from his stance. Like, I like how he's got like a really strong, like, stand. His hands are in his pockets. Like, he's all cool and he doesn't care. He's got this, like, cold little expression. It's also kind of intense. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, okay, so, yeah, so I think you've got some good stuff going on with the white and the red, where I like how he's got, like, white shoes and white hair, and then all the, the red in the middle for his uniform. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about the dye in his hair it's i think it's clashing with <laughs> they look like a boy band they're they're a team <laughs> um uh yeah so there's because there's so much red and yellow going on for their uniforms. It's not Dominique's fire eyes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> sorry. So his hair color, I think, is a little bit off. So I think there's something about the blue and red that is just not working with the other colors in his uniform. I You might have to go... You might have to bring some more kind of cyan into it, like make it a little bit more of a greeny blue, like not teal, but like more like cyan, more of that bright blue. Cause like, it's either that or you need to bring this blue throughout the design more. Cause right now it's, it's, the thing is this red, yeah, more icy. This red is very, orange it has like a bit of orange in it um so this blue is like very high contrast against that and i think because it's like it's so it's like a, it's more kind of pulled to the purple end of blue if that makes sense on the spectrum so it it's kind of clashing with the yellow because yellow and purple cla uh, are opposites and then the blue is the opposite of like the orange that's also kind of in these colors so it yeah i think you need to pull it to that more kind of like icy blue yeah, it's the Chinese flag. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think you need to pull the hair colors to match well with it. So like, yeah, and make the blue more icy. Um, and then the red, I think, could work. You might want to pull it a little bit more to the orange side to match with the, the color of the uniform. Um, Yeah, and I think you could bring a little bit more of some white highlights through the uniform. Maybe like a belt or an undershirt or something. Like I like his overall costume. Like I like the jacket uh, on top of his uniform um, to like add differentiation between the other character uniforms. Um, but yeah, I think there just needs to be like something to cut through all the red. Whether it's like maybe a white belt or some stripes or some color blocking on the... The uniform just something to like break it up a little bit because it's a lot of red um and i think it would go well with his like icy hair and the white shoes and stuff i think that would kind of bring it together a little bit more I can add white to the leotard somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I think that would help out. Um, The other thing I would say, I'm not sure about the squareness of his hair as well. His, his form is very spiky. It's very 
Um, there's lots of triangles and stars going on, obviously. I can see that you're trying to, like, uh, he's got a, it looks like a brother, <laughs> um, who has the kind of, like, squared off hair and maybe fits, uh, his design a bit more. I feel like you're trying to pull that in, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I'm not sure if it, it, I don't know. I feel like you need to bring in more square in order to make it work. The little brother is nice. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel like it needs... It needs, like... More squares elsewhere. Or maybe just sharpened up a little bit. It's hard. I know, because I like the visual comparison to the brother. But I don't know. It feels out of place to me. Because everything else is just so pointy. Make his fringe spike here? Yeah. <laughs> Up to you, if you like it. Because I think you can get the through line. You can understand the relation because of the hair color, right? Yeah. Did you have any other questions about this? Was there anything I didn't cover? That's great. Awesome. Well, thank you for submitting. Awesome. So now we have Mouth. Mouth, I don't know if you're here. I adore this. So the comment on this says, critique this OC I had in elementary school. <laughs> She's part panda, dragon, and wolf. <laughs> I love her. For one. This is my favorite character that exists. I love the panda ears. <laughs> They're so cute. And... The dragon wings and there's also a dragon tail and a wolf tail like that's just so good <laughs> oh it is very 2010s art i love it so much <laughs> i love her i'm 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 copying your oc and i'm making her mine okay so <laughs> i love the vibes she's very like goth girl um, I like the circles around her eyes, like, they are very panda, like, panda markings, but also make her look really tired and, um, apathetic, and it really fits the goth vibe, and I love it. <laughs> I don't know how much I'm supposed to seriously do. <laughs> like, Mouth, you're not here, but are you taking this and, like, redrawing her? <laughs> Is this for the memes? <laughs> just love it so much. I love this character. <laughs> I, is it two tails or is it her hair? If it's her hair, I love it. Because then it gives like the impression of like a wolf tail, but it's her hair. But I assume she had two tails. That's my advice. If you're going to redesign her, turn her wolf tail into like a long ponytail or something. Because <laughs> then you get both. But like um incorporated different <laughs> um i love the wolf paws as well are these gloves or her hands either way i love them um okay so i think there is a little bit uh color clash going on where we have the red of her little um necklace charms uh, it's on her shoes and her shirt. And then we also have this purple going on. The white and black. That is through like the hair and the ears. Um, and through the pants and stuff. Like that can all stay. The black and white, totally fine. Works with everything, right? Um, the purple and the red are clashing a little bit. If I were you, um, I would pull them together 
color wise. So whether that means going with maybe like a more pinky violet for the purple, bringing it more to the red side of the purple end, <laughs> that could work. Or you could bring the red to the more purple side. So making it more like a magenta instead of like a red red. And I think that would bring them together. Alternatively, you could scrap one of the colors. You could make her very, uh, you know, like black and white and red. You could make her black and white and purple. Um, or you need to like reduce the amount of each color. So like she could be mostly like black and white and purple and then keep just a couple of small highlights of the red. Um, uh, or vice versa, you know, mostly red with a few little hints of purple. Um... There, yeah, there's something very 2010s fashion. It's the stripes, the converse, um, the leggings with a skirt. <laughs> it's very 2010s. Um, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. I I really like the the kind of like tutu-y shirt like the uh, shirt skirt like the kind of sheer see-through tulle skirt with the skeleton leggings 10 out of 10 and the sneakers i think that's a really cute look i think the shirt needs to be pulled that way a little bit like don't get me wrong the vertical stri or the horizontal stripes very 2010s very goth very cute um but they i feel like they need to be pulled towards like i don't know they need some of that kind of like fluffiness from the skirt or bring in more of that kind of like skeleton vibe i don't know it's a hard mix i feel like you have to change up either the the skirt and leggings or you need to change the shirt to something a bit more like kind of feminine and matching i feel like you could keep the stripes you could incorporate the stripes somehow but maybe you need to do more kind of like black and white stripiness kind of like a like a you know like witchy sock vibes that kind of thing swap the skirt for shorts and pause for fingerless gloves and that was my fit in 2011 listen i wished i could have dressed like this when i was like 12 um, I wanted to, but I was not courageous enough. So I mostly wore just like t-shirts and jeans. Yes, checkers. Checkers would, would set it off. If they had like a checkered tie, <laughs> I think that would, that would suit her perfectly. I would also, so there's a lot of like motifs going on. Cause you have your stripes, you have these little charms, you have the skeleton. <laughs> there's a lot. So I would recommend choosing one or incorporating them to be a bit more thorough. I feel like you could bring in a hair piece as well. There's like, um, there's a lot you could do with her hair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. That is my critique of your OC. I love her. I'm adopting her. She's mine. I'm stealing her. Claiming her as my own. Um... But yeah, I think we all need to create characters like this more often. You know, live our best lives. And create the characters we would have made as elementary school kids. <laughs> Alright, I think, I think that is it, Mouth. If you watch this, let me know if you have questions. I would love to see a current redesign of this character. She's the best. Well, that's it. That's it. That's all. Thank you all so much for submitting and joining us today. I really appreciate it. And I hope these feedback things were helpful. Um, so we will be doing another one of these at the end of February. If you're watching this and you're not a Patreon supporter and you would like to submit to this next time, uh, sign up for our Patreon. Link down below. Uh, and you can get your stuff in. You can get character designs looked at. You can get comic scripts, comic pages, uh, prose, like um, part of a novel or a short story or something. There's all sorts of stuff you can submit. Uh, so 
give it a think if you're interested. Um, otherwise, we'll see you guys later and take care of yourselves. Mm -hmm.